Hello and welcome to the Heads and Volleys podcast with me, Lee Dunn. Today I have a very exciting guest. He's a man who had been, been pushing me for a little while to get on here. I think he was doubting if I liked him or if I doubted the, the quality that he might bring to your ears today. But Mr. Eddie Hertzenberg is a friend of mine from the A-License. We, we were in the same group. We had some great times out there. And so, Eddie, welcome to Heads and Volleys. Oh, no, thank you. I appreciate it. And you're absolutely right. I was beginning to doubt uh, every little bit of our friendship and our, you know, professional um, um, relationship. <laughs> so, you know, I'm, I'm happy to be able to be on this uh, on this platform with you. I appreciate every bit of it. I was just teeing you up. That's all I was doing and just getting you super excited to bring the story to us. I'm already excited. You don't have to tee it up. I've been waiting for this for three months. So here we go. Give us a little intro. Who, who are you? Where, where do you live? What do you do? Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, I'm Eddie Hertzenberg. So I'm currently in Arizona. I grew up in Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, I've got a wife and two kids. Um, I've been out here in Arizona for now about five or six years, um, you know, coaching full time now um, since moving out here. Right. When we moved out here. Um, I would say I stopped my professional playing career, my soccer playing career. Um, so I was able to kind of grow through and, uh, play college soccer, have a little stint playing some professional soccer, um, in and out of the States, which was nice, uh, experience, but yeah, now I'm, um, living in Arizona, full-time soccer coach, um, and you know, full-time dad. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you, did you end up in Arizona for coaching or how did, how did you end up there from Cincinnati? I know you said kind of with travel and play and which we'll get to the idea of traveling across the world really and playing, but how have you ended up in Arizona? No, actually, I mean, we, we, my wife um, now works at Intel out here in Arizona, big hub out here in Arizona, Chandler. So uh, we basically, um, we, we planted ourselves in Cincinnati cause that was our hometown. We actually bought a house. We were ready to go. Um, and then she, actually was offered just a great position kind of uh, out of nowhere, kind of back with Intel because that's where she was working kind of out of college. And um, so the opportunity kind of rose and we couldn't really pass it up. So we said, uh, you know, let's get, let's get out there. Let's um, see what it's all about. So that's what brought um, us out here was, was her working at Intel. And like I said, I, I moved out here just with, you know, my, my coaching and my playing experience and just started to try to keep up with both, you know, try to play, try to coach. And, um, that's, that's why we're out here still. So the global game can take you anywhere. It brought me to the U S from the UK and it, it took you from just an experience to be able to go and land anywhere and, and be able to get out on the field and, and show what, you know, I love that. It's awesome. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about your playing the different countries you've been in and, and what that was like as a, as a player. Yeah, my uh, my playing career, I've just been uh, kind of flying through, um, you know, playing. I never really say I had a structured route. You know, I think there's, you know, being in coaching and being a part of the game now, you see every every which way you could uh, you could plan a, a a route to play professional soccer or to play college soccer. And um, you know, I continue to express to people that everybody has their own route because. Um, I was just fortunate. I think just, I kept playing. I was very persistent. I was led by a lot of my peers, you know, my peers kind of, um, you know, Hey, I'm going to this college. Oh, well, okay. I guess I'll go there with you, you know, type of thing. <laughs> so guys, um, were kind of driven like that. I was driven just by, um, you know, just fortunate coaches around me and things like that. So I actually played junior college and then I transferred to a NAIA school. Um, and, and, and just kind of, like I said, just being persistent, you know, both programs were really good soccer programs that I was actually to play at. I um, mean, you know, I was able to earn scholarship for both of those, um, but it wasn't necessarily I was, you know, recruited and touted and, um, you know, high profile type of things like that. I just kind of stuck with it. And then right out of college, um, I was fortunate enough just to get called into the reserves for the crew for the end of the year and just played with them. And, um, again, you know, it was one of the situations I would have never really thought of. Um, and it just happened and I probably wasn't ready for it. That's why I didn't stick around at that level. Um, you know, so then at that time there was PDL and, um, USL was just kind of getting going and things like that. So I just stuck with it. I played indoor soccer, um, professionally and just anywhere I could play. Um, I was just trying to play. So, 
that just kind of kept me, you know, around and um, meeting new people and things like that. And I was fortunate enough again with my um, wife to have the opportunity to go overseas, explore things over there. Um, and just basically trial at different, you know, places. There was connections that I had made through the USL that I was able to, Hey, let me, can I, can I come over there and train with you and be a part of those programs? And, um, you know, again, with good people, I was able to have those opportunities and, um, you know, able to just play and meet people. So, and then came back and finished my career, basically playing a little bit of the USL, uh, in Dayton for the Dutch Lions, And, um, that's kind of when, when we kind of moved out here. The idea of persistence, I, I like that the story isn't, I don't want to say pretty, but that's the idea that it's its never going to be a picturesque story for a lot of players. And a lot of players will sit and say, I want to be a pro, or I think I think I want to be a pro, but I don't maybe understand or respect what that what that pathway necessarily means. And as you said, the idea that it, it could be multiple pathways, it could be multiple turns in a pathway that you think you're on. And then the idea of to kind of take from that of not burning bridges of connecting with people as much as you can and really just not knowing where it's going to end up i think having that open mind is is has been so rewarding for you yeah i mean like i said i i would have never um i didn't have a my my, my own closed mind and i always i think that's my personality too is just being open and open-minded to processes and i continue with that with my coaching too is um, you know, I, I, I enjoy the way I coach and, but I also, I would never go into a, a coaching or, you know, you and I, I, I learned a ton of stuff from the A license, just from other people. Um, and I think that's more what it's about just being open. So even when I was playing or, um, things like that, I would have never said like, you know, Hey, this is not how I want it to be. This is not how I plan to be one, because maybe I was just, uh, you know, just naive and hopeful and just saying, Hey, I, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just out here playing soccer. So <laughs> you tell me where you want me to do or what you want me to do. And, um, but yeah, I think just, um, you know, kind of just being open to that stuff and being open to failing because it wasn't all, you know, I, I could have very easily stopped at any point in time. Like you hear plenty of stories of, you know, where, you know, Hey, Juco, what, what do you think ju- junior college is? You know, why, why would you even do that? Because what's the end game there? You know, what's the end game of a, of a four-year school or what's the end game of even playing soccer in the USL, those types of things, you know, but, um, you know, with a little bit of the end game in mind, just with it being open and just having opportunities. Um, I think that just kind of kept me, you know, playing. I just love the, love the game too. So I made it easy, but, um, it certainly was a, a, a different path. Like, like you said, any, any type of way you can, you can do it. It's so interesting too, because so many, so many clubs or organizations will, will talk about a pathway and we'll talk about your club experience in a second and having a very clear pathway, but the kind of, it doesn't work for everybody. And so that idea of persistence, that idea of just loving the game that much that you'll play anywhere. And like you say, I don't, I, I'm just playing, I'm just going where I'm going and, and I'll, I keep turning up. So do you have a, like a secret or a tip on a mindset for someone or someone that's working with kind of influential players, especially as they get into to an age where they start thinking more seriously about pursuing soccer? Did you do have, I know you said you kind of followed on the coattails a little bit, but do you have a mindset, like a, a tool or a key that you would use a lot for you when you were playing and changing pathway? Well, no, I don't, I don't think um, I could remember anything I did in particular. Like I said, there was a lot of um, joy. There was a lot of naiveness to it where um, I was, you know, kind of um, open to what I, what I was being provided with. You know what I mean? Like I, like I said, I didn't have somebody in my ear saying, you know, this is not what it should be. Like, why are you, you know, you, you should be playing division one soccer instead of Juco. You know what I mean? I had confidence that I liked soccer and I enjoyed playing soccer. And, um, you know, like I said, I think, um, that was just the, the joy of it that it brought just the competitiveness kind of, uh, kept my mentality about it. Um, but I would also say, you know, you hear things about just being, you know, comfortable being uncomfortable and being able to deal with failures. Cause like I said, I mean, getting, going to a junior college could have been considered a failure for a lot of, you know, people coming out of high school soccer, you know, and then there's a lot of people that quit soccer when they come out of high school and they don't get a uh, division one soccer um, opportunity, you know, and they, they might be thinking a year before that they're going to play professional soccer. And I don't want to say that I didn't think I was going to play professional soccer. I mean, there was um, a dream about playing professional soccer, but it wasn't maybe the, the driving force for me. It was, 
um, you know, the, just to continue to play and um, uh, find opportunities within whatever, whatever was put in front of me, you know, uh, because yeah. everything was, everything was positive. So I would say, yeah, just, just being uh, okay with, with, that failure or just kind of being open to the different pathways and make, make whatever, whatever track, you know, you can out of, you know, um, what your kind of, what your track is, you know what I'm saying? So your, your pathway is this way and it's telling you to go right. Um, you got to be able to go right and, and take advantage of whatever that is, you know, and not say, Oh, I should be going left. You know, it's like, that's what I think. <laughs> I'll ask you about your, your high school coaching role and then connecting that in with, how you just said about coming out of high school and and seeing junior college as a quote unquote failure for for a lot of players. Like they don't get that full ride division one scholarship. So that seems as a failure. So now the high school program that you're coaching in, is that I'm assuming that's part of your education with your players and and helping them not only on the field, but then in the, the future as well. Yeah. I mean, it's probably the toughest part I think is, um, as a coach for me right now, just kind of, um, you know, cause I've been fortunate enough to continue my coaching education. I've been fortunate enough to meet, you know, great coaches and, and I've just been fortunate enough to even coach at a decent level. And even, even, uh, I think high school gets a, a bad rap. Um, but I mean, even five years ago when I moved here and I was just looking for an opportunity and I had somebody just put the high school opportunity in front of me, I did. It's the same. If we go back to our, our pathways, right? Like, you know, you, I would have never thought maybe that I would be coaching high school, but I moved to Arizona and it was an opportunity and I just kind of got involved and I got involved with some, some good people and the high school program that I've been at for five years has, um, you know, been to a, a state final twice and been to a state semifinal two times, um, which again, in this area, um, I think is just great. So the, the level of competition, the level of players, the level of, you know, community involvement into it is, has been good. So that's been the challenge I think is because, um, we are very good, you know, and the, the, the players are very good. Uh, so, but you know, you have 25 kids on a high school team, um, and you have 10 of them maybe graduating, um, it, it, you'd be hard pressed to say that 10 of them are going to go to the division one soccer program, you know, even though some of them all deserve that, but, um, it's just, um, it's just not easy, you know? And like I said, same thing for the club. I've been fortunate to coach good club soccer teams and, um, you know, go travel and play against good coaches and the high school and the club. I, I coach and play and coach against good coaches, um, with good players. And I think that's the challenge is because there is a certain level of disappointment. You know, it's hard for somebody to, to, to be excited about, you know, every offer that comes their way, um, you know, when maybe they have their idea set on a different type of path, you know? So, um, that, that's been the challenge, but I, I, I enjoy high school very much. Um, there, there's a challenge there with the level of kind of sticking with it because, uh, it's not easy to be, I think, good. So there's a, there's a level of mentality. I think there, like you were bringing up maybe is, um, how hard it is to continue to be good and, you know, to, to challenge yourself that way, um, from a, from a young player standpoint, you know, that's a lot of weight on their shoulders to have to win all the time or their community or their parents think that they should win and when they don't, or when they don't get that offer. And it's only a junior co a college offer. Uh, that's a lot of the mental, um, challenge, I think for some of these players. So it's hard. The high school experience is, is so interesting to me because it, I had a conversation recently about it that it almost replicates a professional environment with the intensity and the training and the games, the frequency, like the in-depth contact with your players is is something that I imagine probably a lot of club teams would like. And if you compare the the two seasons, it'd almost be nice if it went even longer. So do you do you look forward to coaching high school? Is that like a, a release from club or is that like the highlight of your year? Um, I don't, I don't know that it's a release or if it's a highlight, but I, I mean, I do look, for, I do look forward to it. I mean, um, you know, like a lot of, like a lot of different, uh, parts of the year, um, you know, they have, it has its challenges and, um, it's like any, any part. So, you know, by release, I think it's, it's kind of nice because I think you get to a part of club or you get to a part of something where you're like, man, I, I, I need something different. or I need a different challenge. And then you, then you get into the high school year. And then by the end of the high school, you're like, Oh man, I really want to get into a club. So, <laughs> so maybe it is a good change. Um, it's, it's different. Um, I do look forward to it, but you know, but you, you are right. I think it, it, there's some resemblance to the college game. There's some resemblance to professional 
soccer, just because you, you do have connection with your players all year round, regardless of if you coach them in club or not. Um, you know, you have that connection with them through the school platform. Um, you have the connection to, you know, their grades. Um, you have the connection to the community. Uh, so, yeah, I think, I think there's a lot, of, a lot of good positives to high school soccer, and I do look forward to it. Um, maybe not any more or less than I do maybe any type of club environment or going to a club tournament or coaching, you know, a, a nine- or ten-month season for club. But um, I would say that, yeah, the position I'm in right now provides a lot of uh, – excitement i agree with you too on the idea that the end of the season always feels like the end of the season it's like i am tired i am done i'm done like this is our last game this is our, this, this is our final pizza party if you like or whatever it is but you you know you spend you spend however many months training and getting ready for that final and then it's done and it, i agree with you the thought of getting back on the field the very next day and training those same players feels like it's like a mental game you've you've hit the end of it and now I would agree that it's time to go and kind of go and jump into something else and I've always been I would say a critic of high school soccer just think I was maybe influenced by the people that would critique high school soccer a lot and that became kind of the influence on me and the idea that it was never really all that good but as you say if you're coaching good players in a good good environment and you're playing at a real good level then there's nothing that you you, you can't complain about that that surely is like you said, that, that replication of a, of a quality environment is, is really where we all want to be as coaches. Nobody really signs up to coach the bad kids. And I mean bad kids as in you join an organization and they have five teams at an age group. Nobody wants to coach the fifth team. Everybody wants to coach the first team, unless it's your own kid in the fifth team, I guess. But <laughs> for most people, you know, they want to be at the top. And that, that for a lot of coaches is probably the most feasible way to get to the top. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I'm fortunate enough, and that's my 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 background and my uh, it's my life, you know. So soccer, I, um, you know, being around the competitive side of it has driven me, you know, in the past and driven my personal life. So, um, you know, but like you know, like you said, I think that it replicates a lot of things, the community of it. So you have different levels of high school, and I think that's part of the high school that gets a bad rap is, you know, not every high school. I mean, not every high school football program is the best football program in the state either. So, you know, what, what do you, what do you say to those kids that want to play high school sports that, um, you know, aren't going to have the same opportunities. Um, but that, that doesn't mean that, uh, you know, there's, there's, there's kids playing at, you know, division one colleges playing in national championships that, you know, that played at, um, you know, three, a type of high schools, you know, for football. I mean, it just, so finding your right little path is, is key. Um, I, I think there's definitely different ways to do it, you know, but you have different divisions for high school. You have different challenges and you have different, you know, the same thing, like that fifth team or that fifth division high school team. Uh, the beauty of it is hopefully that they're playing against relative competition, you know, so they can uh, still be, you know, they can still be a, uh, a state champion show, so to speak. But um, I would say it is a little bit different. I mean, everybody has their, uh, their different views and maybe that is the, the pinnacle for a, um, you know, a high school PE teacher who also coaches soccer at a three, a school and, you know, can kind of drive kids into an environment. Like you said, the environment is all that matters. I mean, that's what we're all out here doing is trying to provide an environment um, for the kids to enjoy and be successful. But, you know, some of those kids will have a great experience playing high school soccer, you know, yeah. at a level. Um, maybe one of them will go play college soccer. Maybe one of them will go play Juco, you know, and play with a guy like me, or maybe one of them will be me and play Juco and then play division, you know, NAIA and then, you know, whatever their pathway is. But yeah, there's, there's all kinds of different ways to cut it. Um, I, I, I do think that high school soccer provides a, a great environment for the kids. And um, I think it can be better utilized, but um you know, like I said, not every high school has uh, the same, you know, the same resources, so to speak. You know, I mean, like I said, I coach against great coaches in my high school um, schedule. You know, not everybody can say that really, you know, so. Yeah. Um, and my, my, my team plays against good teams. So um, so I would argue from my standpoint that high school can be super beneficial for kids and even for me as a coach. But, you know, some people might say like, well, no, it's not like that for me. I don't play against good coaches. I don't, you know, I don't have good referees. I don't, you know, <laughs> that would be, that's, that's the challenge. Make a good point though about even just individually as a coach, the fact that you are now managing a schedule and as you said, 25 players that are all 
perhaps on different pathways and, and trying to either love the game and just play and represent their school or players that are trying to push for more and more. And I think that as a coach, you've got to learn to deal with, with those different personalities. And I think club, you may have a more rounded collective of players. And we'll talk about your club experience in a second. But the idea that you are now like managing a schedule that is is full on and your club schedule kind of becomes routine. I would I would argue for me, it definitely becomes more routine. We train on these days. We have games on these days. On the other days that I don't have contact with you, I have expectations or there are there's some sort of call or some sort of kind of call to action on their part, but it becomes almost routine. And I think if you're actually engaging with players every day, like in that environment, it might be very different for you as a coach and a real good skill to learn. So, Flipping gears into the idea of working in, in club versus high school, the club you work for is RSL Arizona. And how long yes, do you work with those guys? Yeah, probably. You know, it's the same thing. I uh, right when we moved here, um, they were. I started with this club, who at the time was was Legacy, um, and then you know wasn't uh, two years ago we 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 combined forces, um, and now you know being uh, RSL Real Salt Lake Arizona. Uh, which was, you know, used to be the club down in Casa Grande. That's, um, you know, the academy program for Real Salt Lake in Arizona. Uh, so, yeah, there was clubs that kind of uh, joined and, and now created uh, Real Salt Lake, Arizona. So, uh, all in all, I've been probably with basically the same club, um, which is now RSL AZ or Utah Royals AZ for about five years. And then let me ask you about, through our A license together, we worked a lot on kind of our own individual models and our own, the, the way we want to do things ourselves, our own environment, managing our own environment, managing our players. Now, working within a greater organization like that in comparison to what I'll call a regular soccer club, are you limited? Are you hamstrung? Are you free to do your own thing? Are you doing it within the framework of the club or is the club's framework your framework? How does it work for you as a as an individual within a, within a greater organization like that. Yeah, I think you said it right. I think the club's framework is with, within my framework. Um, you know, I think that the, the standards of the club um, with the coaches uh, is really high. So you have a lot of good coaches, a lot of good ideas. Um, you know, the coach, they, the, the club puts out a, a curriculum. We do have a style of play. We do have a game model, I think, um, you know, and, and, but being, being a large club, I think you have, um, you know, top to bottom, every, every different type of player and every different type of team. Like you said, you could have a fifth team, you know, is that team playing a certain style of, um, and I'd say to a certain extent, yes, I think that's the goal. Um, obviously is to have a, a certain game model. And, um, I think, um, you know, whether or not I'm fortunate enough, I think, you know, the, the game model that I, I like to play and the style of play uh, uh, certainly fits kind of the uh, the overall, you know, Real Salt Lake style of play or the, you know, the game model there. So um, maybe that's why I'm still around, you know, if yeah. <laughs> a lot of the coaches have to uh, kind of, um, you know, kind of adhere to that type of model. Um, so, yes, to a certain extent, I think the club um, – has an overview of of the game model and the style of play for all the players, all the coaches. Um, it is a very large club, so can every team display that you know that to a T? Probably not. But like I said, I I have uh, a similar style of play and a game model um, that you know that allows me to be free at least, you know, and be and coach my way at least. And then how does that? How is that shared with you? Do you are there like education sessions where as groups of coaches you're together on the field seeing different I guess sessions on building certain parts of a model together? Is that is that how it's shared? And I just know from my own experience where I've worked within organizations and going back to my B license, we did the same kind of environment uh, essay or kind of part of the assignments. And I actually reflected on the organization I was working in and I decided it's not for me. And I actually left my organization and changed organization halfway through my license because I've actually taken a second and reflecting on what was actually going on around me and deciding this isn't for me. And so do you, are you shared with that? Are you, do you, like, are you empowered in, in ways or do they kind of say, this is what it is. And, and if you fit, you fit. And if not, you're not. Um, I mean, it's, 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 it's kind of put out there. I think there's just a large database of, 
you know, information and it's shared via the, the, the club directors and, you know, there's sessions that are shared, but that would be the freedom that you have. I think you can, you can, uh, you can structure your own sessions. You can run your own sessions. You can run your own activities. Um, you know, you can, um, you know, coach and set up and, uh, you know, do game days the way you want to do game days. I think, um, like I said, it's a, it's an, it's an overview. It's a, um, but yeah, you're, I'm, I'm allowed to have that, that freedom, um, I think, but, you know, it's basically shared, you know, week to week, um, and month to month, you know, on a curriculum wide basis and kind of where we all want to be, um, with our teams. And then, you know, each coach can then personalize it, you know, and each coach does it, uh, their own type of, uh, their own type of thing, you know, when it comes to that. Working within a great organization like that, is there an expectation to win or a demand on it? Well, like is that I said, a parent thing? Yeah, no, I think there, we, um, personally, um, the viewpoint on that, and I think as a club, I think we, we want to win. Um, yeah. And, and like I said, the club is big enough. It's not really like, it's, it's just a competitive club, but you know, the, um, the programs that we have at the top, you know, begin to think more about winning and the age groups that the, those programs play at. But, um, you know, being part of the, um, the new MLS, um, league and then the, the girls Academy league now, um, is where our most competitive teams play. And then you have the ECNL level, uh, teams as well. Um, you know, those types of, you know, when you get into those age groups that, you know, the focus is winning, um, the focus is competitive. I mean, I, th- I thank you. I think as a club, we are very competitive, um, in terms of the coaching standards, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to say that w- we just focus on winning, um, or it is a focus, uh, but I think the focus of, of the standards of training and being competitive and trying to win and, um, is, is definitely there. I think from that standpoint, being, being a, a competitive club and having, um, those, you know, one of the higher competitive programs. Um, and like I said, I think a higher standard of coaches, I think that absolutely is a focus is the, the fact that we want to go out there and compete all the time. And that's how we're going to learn, you know, I mean, we're going to do it in a certain way, but you know, if you're not out there trying to do it to a certain way of winning, uh, then, then that, that makes it a lot harder. You said it perfectly I, in the, it's not that it becomes win at all costs, but it becomes a case of we're going to train to win. We're going to do everything we can so that we can or we can compete and win. And the idea of the way you set up your training, that that becomes who you are, that that almost has like a, a knock-on effect to the players. They know the environment they're coming into. And I imagine working within this organization, as you said, at the top, there's there's very top levels, which it's probably a motivation for a lot of players to a join the organization and for B to, we go back to this pathway idea again, that's, that's where they can see themselves going. Now, is that, is that something that you think is, is a, a, um, it's only going to be a positive, I believe, unless you think otherwise, but is that something that you see as a real good kind of motivator for players as well? Uh, Yeah, I think it's just, it's an added, it's an added uh, bonus for sure. I mean, I, I wouldn't even say that not everybody even looks at it like that. You know, I, I would say that there is, um, you know, just because that's the culture, right. Do, do, do we know what, you know, the, the professional soccer environment is, or, um, do we know that, you know, where Real Salt Lake, you know, is and plays and what league and what type of players they play and what type of style does the pro team play or, um, the Utah Royals, you know, women's team and the NWSL and, um, you know, that type of thing. So it's definitely a hundred percent a positive to have the connection there and to be able to, uh, you know, relate it, to be able to relate it to video. Um, cause like, you know, like you said, you can have just this, um, overlying bubble, um, you know, like, Oh, you know, th- this isn't, this isn't how it's going to be. Uh, but you know, if you have to, let's go take a look at this. If you want, you know, let's go take a look at the pro team. Let's go take a look at this. And that at least gives you a visualization of it, um, to kind of say, well, okay, that, that, that seems uh, like a higher standard, even though I'm a, I'm the fifth team and I'm, you know, 10 years old, I can still relate to the highest level, um, or at least the highest level that I'm exposed to, you know, I mean, maybe some kids are watching, um, you know, Bayern Munich play every weekend. You know, yeah. but, but but maybe some of them aren't, and maybe some of them the only thing they get are clips of professional art. You know, Real Salt Lake play. Um, you know, maybe they're fortunate enough to watch college soccer, uh, things like that. So I think it's it's only a positive for sure to have that outlet to say, you know, this is you know this is the uniform you're wearing. This is what the highest level looks like. 
Um, you know, but for a 10 year old, they could be looking at the U18 team and say that, you know, it's kind of just whichever way you kind of put it out there in front of them, or even as a parent, you know, are you a parent telling kids, you know, 11 years old, like if you want to play for Real Salt Lake, this is what you got to do type of thing. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's kind of hard. That kind of goes back to the beginning is, you know, what's, you know, what's the pathway, what's somebody putting out in front of you? Because if, if then if you're not doing it, you feel like you're doing something wrong. Um, so uh, it's only a positive that the kids at least get to know that they're tied into that for sure. Yeah. And I imagine for, for a kid, I, I imagine I remember playing for Northampton town in the UK and we would go into the changing rooms after the first team had played and we would clean up and just looking back at that and seeing those players wearing the same uniform that I was wearing playing in the stadium. Like that to me was just such a simple pathway to see like you're, you're, you're in the same organization. So that, to me was, uh, I don't think anybody, it was never really a focal point, but as a player, I knew it. Like those players are wearing the same uniform as me. I have a chance to go and wear that uniform. I was a ball boy during the professional games. I had the same badge on all the time. I, that was a, a clear pathway for me. And something I've noticed is a lot of clubs are adding USL franchises and, and being able to identify a pathway. We keep talking about pathway, but this idea of there's, there's a men's team or a women's team ahead of you. And, and this is where you can end up. And I think that can only help players see the future a little bit more because what I've noticed even during this quarantine time of kids not really understanding the future and, and working independently with every player and saying, you know, where do you want to end up? What, what do you think you want to do? Shoot for the moon. You want to play for the U S national team. You want to play for Mexico. Like that's what you want to do. What is it going to look like for you? What, what are the twists and turns that could get you there? And, for many, they don't have that big picture idea. But I think if you tied in an organization like this, where you can see even just the top guys wearing the same badge, that can only help. That can only help stimulate. It can only help excite. It can only help kind of help them understand that they, that is a possibility for them. Yeah, definitely. And like you said, going back to your own personal experience that, and you, being fortunate enough to grow up in that culture. And I would say, you know, the experiences that I've had, that was, that was the biggest thing is, you know, is, is, um, you know, soccer is everywhere, you know, when you get into, you know, you know, Europe or the UK and things like, mm. and, you, and you're just exposed to it around the corner. So, um, you know, and then it's in the marketing and it's in the, the, <laughs> the stores and it's in the restaurants and it's on the news and it's on the TV. And, um, you know, like I said here, it's, it's not necessarily like that. So it is certainly beneficial to create that culture and for clubs to have, um, you know, USL teams in the same state, you know, or other clubs that are part of USL, you know, whatever it is, and other clubs that are part of pro teams and other clubs that have, you know, these challenges. I think that that's, um, it's just, it's just good for the game. It's good for the culture. Right. I mean, cause at the end of the day, like, you know, looking further down the road, hopefully like that's, that's, you know, you're only going to be able to be tied into that part of your community or, um, you know, to kind of keep you involved um, that you want to be a part of it. Right. Because you know that it's tied in or, you know, that your neighbor or your buddy over there is tied in and he wears the same badge. And then, you know, so even though that, you know, you can't maybe watch the, the professional game, you know, in your own backyard, like it, like, the, like it is a lot of the places, um, you know, in Europe, but um, at least there's some sort of tie in and that's only going to keep growing and growing and growing the way you see the MLS or the way you see the USL or the USL yeah. two or the MPSL or whatever men's league team that you can actually put out there in front of uh you know kids or people to create that culture that they can tie in or could be high school or college you know i mean if, if you did a good enough job at it um because you know the numbers are there and the structure is there but you know just to have something that that like you're saying like the badge like oh hey i wear that same badge like let me just go out mm -hmm. there and this with a certain level of respect and even though you know you toss the ball to a guy you probably didn't know whether or not he was you know, so and so, you know, bench player, or he could have been the best. <laughs> he could have been the best player in the country at the time, you know, but, but you don't know. But you, you probably felt just this level of pride, I think, regardless. You know, I know that, you know, just, just being a part of the game, you, you can walk into, you walk off that field as a, a USL 2 player, and a kid will look at you like, you know, you're, you're David Beckham sometimes. I mean, just it's just a hero. So, you, yeah. you know, so that, that to, to the kid then, you understand that that's just a big part of it. I think just to have that. So then when we um, refer again to the A license and working through uh, like IDPs, individual development plans and 
I'm a huge advocate for them. I think they can only help. And with the players, I often try and challenge them to think about the players they can replicate or the idea of the the environment those players have been in and where they've come from. Do you have stuff like that that you do with your players or anything significant that you can kind of follow along with them? And, and I think kind of going back to the idea of this pathway, and this is maybe where high school versus club soccer is a bit more of a discussion in that if you're in a club environment like RSL or like Utah Royals, where you have, you see the, the first team ahead of you, you can begin to perhaps shape an IDP along the, that pathway. Whereas with high school, it seems like it's kind of open-ended where they could go from there because it's not like a high school feeds to a college or feeds to another type of program. So like, how do you, how do you separate the way you work with players in club and then from, from high school? Yeah, a little bit of the, the same. I mean, just be, because, you know, the exposure to the club and the IDPs and, um, you know, just kind of build relationships with the players um, and just figuring out what their, their plan would be or what their goals are. Um, and, you know, like I said, having, you know, the, the competitive, the, the, the upper competitive club soccer, you see the kids, you know, three to four times a, a, a week, you know, maybe you see them all weekend at the tournaments, um, you know, so you're with them, you're around them. So I think it's important to just kind of always be, uh, like I said, I, 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 my pathway wasn't as structured as we talked about before. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't, you know, Hey, you get to this point and you go this way and you get to this point and you go that way. Um, so I would say, you know, even still to this day, I would say my coaching is like that where each kid, I try to, um, try to engage in a certain way and see, you know, well, this, here's, here's your goal. And, um, maybe you can do this and what, what's, what's your, you know, give them some kind of uh, a freedom or some kind of accountability, um, and kind of empower them into their own individual development plan. Cause like I said, I was kind of forced into that, you know, I was empowered yeah. to do my own thing. Um, so as a coach, I, I try to do that as well. Um, you know, I think more, some more, more kids need direction than others, you know, I think, um, and some people feel like they're failing because maybe they're not getting, um, told that they're going to, you know, they need to do this to go to a division one, you know, thing like a program or something like that. But I would say, you know, the club has a, a level of IDP and, um, you know, and, and, a, and a pathway to, to do that stuff. Um, each kid is, is different for the high school too. I utilize a lot of the club stuff I do for high school. You know, it's a shortened season for sure, but um, you know, we, we have the kids fill out um, individual development plans, figure out what they want to do. And that's, and that's the, the beauty of the high school too. Cause you have maybe freshmen that are a part of a team and that's completely different than a, a senior. That's a part of that team and what their season looks like and what their end goal is, because they might be thinking about that uh, college scholarship. And, you know, whereas a freshman is just thinking, Oh, I want to just be a part of the team. And <laughs> I just want to make the team yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just be called upon um, every now and then. But yeah, so I, I, I try to just have just relationships and on a, you know, on a daily weekly basis, you know, kind of talking to the kids about where they're at, what they think. And, um, like, yeah, to a certain extent, keep their mind off of, um, you know, the, the end game type of thing, you know, like it's always there, but you know, with, with, you know, your approach shouldn't change, uh, every day because, you know, all of a sudden it clicks in your mind, like, Oh, I'm going to be a division one soccer player. I better start, you know, it's, <laughs> a lot of, it, it, it shouldn't change a whole lot. So I think, you know, just pushing each kid individually, um, in their own way and holding them accountable as best you can um, is important for all, all levels, you know, and not, and not, you know, like you said, not being too structured with it too, not being too like set in your way. It's like, Oh, you didn't do that. Like you didn't get your 50 juggles. Well, say, say goodbye. What are you me. doing? <laughs> <laughs> um, what are you even doing? <laughs> so you make a really good point too, that maybe this could be a fault of my own too. in, in, focusing constantly on the idea of the end goal like i want you to be the best that you can be that's my that's my my philosophy when i'm when i'm coaching you but sometimes i can get i guess bogged down in in those ideas i want you to be the best you can be and we're going to make you a pro and that starts with you doing everything right now like don't mess up right now or make sure you get those 50 juggles or make sure that the ball work that you're doing right now is is super relevant and i've tried to kind of shift that focus a little bit and like you said i think perhaps your experience and your own your own soccer education have have really helped set you up to work with players in such a different way than what i had and i guess i want to like share with the players that they can do it 
but I didn't do it. So now I'm maybe perhaps anxious to challenge them to, to do it because I didn't and I want them to do it so bad. And really like consciously focusing on the idea that you can go and mess around, go and kick the ball in the basketball hoop, go do some bicycle kicks into the pool. Like go and have some fun with it as well as be completely serious and just love it. I think that maybe that's one of the biggest things I'm taking away from the way you work with your players too. You're a person and you're, you're someone that I want you to love the game first and foremost. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, it's a hard balance. Like you said, I, I can do a better job. I think sometimes being, you know, honed in and, and, and say, well, yeah, if you don't get these 50 juggles, you know, it's like, a, you know, you're, you're not developing in the right manner. But, um, you know, like I said, when I, when I, when I look back, even at my youth, I don't think I was, you know, when I went out to the park with, with my best friends and, you know, we were kicking balls and we were doing bicycle kicks and we were doing tricks and flicks. I don't think that we, you know, kind of scheduled it at 3 PM and we said, Hey guys, <laughs> don't forget if we don't do this, we're not going to play professional soccer, you know, and, and Hey, make sure when you're whipping that ball in, you do this because if you don't, you know, you're not going to be a, pro- I mean, there was just a certain level. I think you have to have a certain level of night, you know, naiveness to, um, you know, what you're doing. But yeah, at the end of the day, like you, you, like you said, you're trying to be the best you can, you know, for that day and you have to do it in a manner that, I mean, you know, I'm doing, I'm doing this because I enjoy it. I enjoy the competitive side of it. Um, you know, there, there isn't never going to be a time when I don't want to be better, you know, and I don't want to keep, you know, keep enjoying playing soccer, you know? So, um, that, that sort of thing has to be the idea too, where you're just going out there and you're you're training and you're training hard. And, uh, like I said, it doesn't matter if it's Tuesday or Thursday or whether or not you have a championship game or you have a, um, a a bye week you know, type of thing, um, or if you're, you're stuck at home for three months, you know, it's like what's changed between <laughs> my challenge too is, you know, figuring out what, what is your, what is your mentality or your approach to it. Um, and it has to be driven, but it can't always be, you know, you're, dr- you're driving into that, that end goal. Right. Cause that's, that's when the burnout I think happens. So I was, um, but you, you know, you don't want to be lazy. You know? No, I, I agree. And I think maybe that's the line that, many coaches are trying to to figure out and then i want to ask you about the this idea if, if people start to talk about return to play and and to go back to my my comment in terms of you know i like to coach in a certain way i think the way that i coach will help players understand more than i am kind of teach them why as well as how and so really helping them see in things like small-sided games and i know in arizona you've you've recently got back on the field and People, I'm seeing people posting session plans, at least, of how they're planning on working with their kids in isolated practices or trying to follow this social distancing idea, but still trying to train. And that, to me, is scary because it's very anti what I would do in a typical session. And so what's that been like for you in terms of challenging the players and even challenging yourself? Because I know you, you follow a very similar style of coaching to me in terms of using games more than, than the, the theoretical isolated right. practice. Yeah. And everything, you know, going into finishing up, you know, the A license and all that stuff and the education, you know, you have to, you know, every, everything that, that, that we've discussed and led into this point has been trying to make it as realistic to the game as you can. And then all of a sudden something like this happens and you're talking about training in a 10 yard by 10 yard box, you know, <laughs> um, with no, with, with nobody else, you know, or you're, you're training on a zoom meeting and you're thinking to yourself, you know, well, um, obviously there's certain levels to benefit, uh, for all those things. Um, I would say too. I mean, I, I was anxious to get back out on the field. Um, I was, you know, I was just concerned for every reason, you know, but, uh, and obviously it was just different. So, um, but that's, that's exactly what it is. It's different. Um, I've tried to find ways, uh, like, you know, to try to visualize, you know, being out on, you know, a soccer field. I mean, it's, it's, it's nice to go out there and, um, again, I, maybe we're fortunate enough to be able to go out right now because again, there's coaches, there's kids that are, um, like yourself that are still unable to do that. Um, but we're fortunate that we were able to be out there and that's been the message. I think like, Hey, at least you can pull your head up from, you know, the hard work and sweat and you can look across 10 yards, you know, and you can't high five each other. You can't hug each other, but at least you now know that this person's working hard, um, and that they're out there with you. <laughs> And, you know, and, and like I said, there's been a certain level of like fun to it. You know, uh, we've gotten the music out there. We've gotten, you know, like I said, there's, there's something to be said about just doing skill work. 
Um, there's something to be said about, you know, playing three games a week and getting that game experience. Um, you know, but at the end of the day, yeah. uh, you have to, you have to take whatever, um, you know, a, a, the, the, the main message, right? Like the, the, every, everybody's got a different uh, track here. Like the track now is telling us that we have to go outside and, and be stuck in a 10 yard box and, and train, you know, we could, we could not do it or we could complain about it or we could just figure out whatever way we can uh, to adjust and, and be better. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's, that's been the fun part for me is trying to, you know, to a certain extent, pretend, you know, and try to visualize and say, and tell <laughs> me, you know, like, you know, I, I, the, my, my whole thing throughout all this, the first two weeks where I was training kids, you know, 20 kids on a field and then 10 yard boxes. And uh, I told them the last thing I wanted them to get better at was dribbling to a cone, you know, and <laughs> back and forth to a cone, uh, with your head down. So I think that's been the challenge. Um, you know, for the kids too. Um, but you know, like I said, I tell, I tell them at the end of every session too, you know, you're out here, you're outside, you're out here working, uh, to a certain extent that's going to benefit you. Um, but there are things that you can create, you know, bad habits. So that is the challenge. I think when you start getting back, you know, returning to play and, you know, having the idea that there are no soccer games that are going to be played, um, you know, tomorrow or soon, um, for a lot of people and how can you relate it to a, a, a real live game? You know, if the end goal is to be a good soccer player, not somebody that, you know, dribbles in a box. It's like I, I can be a good dribbler in a box, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> it's, uh, it, it's interesting. Again, the, the idea of persistence comes out again for the kids to just keep doing it, keep working it. This is, this is the situation we have right now. Like you said, you are fortunate enough to be out on the field here in California. We're not. We're not allowed out yet. It looks like. In San Francisco, we're looking at August as a as a get back on the field time. So we're uh, we're we're literally months behind. So if you want to host us, I'll fly my team out to Arizona <laughs> and we can play in Arizona. <laughs> yeah, man. Send, send your team out here maybe for a training session. Uh, you know, bring them out here for for a, a friendly match if, if we're all allowed to do that. Um, so yeah. What are you doing for for sessions and such? Where are you? What are you drawing on from that? Because I'm seeing people on Twitter. Twitter is a real good place. Do you you making your own? Is it a club resource or is it something that you are researching? And if so, where from? Yeah, the, no, the the club um, the club has you know good standards of coaches. So there's a lot of shared material, um, I think. And then again, you 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 take that. Um, some people might really enjoy developing sessions like Corver sessions, you know, and some people are really good at it. Um, I've taken Corver, you know, youth diplomas and stuff like that. So, um, I'm familiar with it. Um, but yeah, some, there's some information that's been shared and then you can kind of put your own turns and twists into it. Um, mm -hmm. but it's just been a lot of that. It's been a lot of technical stuff. Um, you know, a lot of ball work, a lot of mobility stuff. Um, yeah, just loads of technique and loads of fitness, I guess, uh, to a certain extent. Um, do you yeah. change it up? Do you, do you change the content or the work that specific players are doing based on, based on their position or based on the demands of them in a the game? Or is it kind of everybody's doing the same sort of thing? Uh, my, my way of doing it, um, is, is to kind of give the players that, um, you know, they, they need to do that. So if, for instance, if you're doing a, some ball work and you're driving into a, you know, to do a move and execute and beat a defender to find space, you know, and you're doing that in a 10 yard box. Um, but it is different, you know, when you talk, maybe you're talking to a U 18, um, you know, higher level elite player or something. And, and they already know that they're a right back. Um, you know, so my message to the group would be, you know, visualize yourself in your own position, making this movement, you know what I mean? So rather than, um, kind of developing a session to where, because we have goalkeeper, I have a goalkeeper that comes out just to do the technical work. You know what I'm saying? So um, you, you could, you could request maybe that goalkeeper to bring their gloves and do some diving work for, for them maybe in that technical session, or you just, you know, tell them like, Hey, in the course of the buildup, you understand that you have to make two dribbles forward and try to make a pass. Can you kind of make that up in your mind um, type of situation? So um, I'd say most of the kids, most of the time are doing, um, the same exact exercise, uh, but, you know, you kind of empower them or try to tell them to figure out a way if they need to, you know, for a 10 year old, it might not be necessary, but for, you sure. know, the U8, you know, six or the center midfielder that needs to scan the field more, maybe you, you know, you you can, as an individual coach that player to, to scan the field more, or you tell the outside back to drive quicker and to accelerate into the space quicker type of situations, you know? 
So I like that. And I've done a lot of work on position profiles too. And, and the same thing, helping players understand the demand on them and, and try and reduce the, not the demand on me, but the, the reliance on me to, to give them kind of the answer so much. Like you've, you've identified yourself as a number six, what's important for you. So how is that important for you in this 10 yard box right now? And I think that's the, that's been my biggest takeaway for if we are able to get back on the field and work isolated that bringing this, this whole position profile with them and really understanding, as you said, what, what's, what's relevant to you right now? What, 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 what's so important for you and how are you going to put that in here? Right. Yeah. And then again, each, each kid's development is, is different too. I mean, if you just related to, you know, somebody that's just, you know, lights out with the right foot and you can just tell them, Hey, challenge yourself and just do everything with your left foot then, you know, yeah, so as, as simple as something like that, you know, when we're doing these isolated training sessions, um, you know, can be the challenge. Um, you know, we have kids that are, uh, you know, you're talking about like, Oh, eight kids training with, you know, uh, Oh, one, Oh, two kids. And how do you, how do you push them to be, uh, kind of different sometimes or, um, are, are they pushing the technique and the other kids are pushing the physical, um, or the explosiveness or, you know, you kind of give a little bit of leeway because that player needs to have their head down a little bit more. Whereas, you know, you're yelling at the other player that they need to get their head up, um, more. So, uh, lot, lots of different challenges. Like I said, I mean, there's, we, we would hope and wish that these kids, the, the kids are, are doing a lot of the stuff that we're doing now together on their own. Right. Because when they come to the team sessions, we're now able to, to do the, the game realistic and the, 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 the bigger picture type of stuff. And, um, you know, in, in a real life, uh, formations and, uh, game scenarios type of thing. So, you know, and so you hope that stuff that we're working on now, we've always hoped that kids are doing on their own, you know, in their backyards with 10 yards. So if anything, maybe every kid can take away from something like this that, Hey, all right, well, this is what I can do now instead of, you know, on Thursday, um, outside of my team session, I'm going to be doing this stuff. So yeah, I think there's a, there's a lot of positives to come from it. Um, you know, because otherwise we wouldn't be doing this, you know, and it's summertime sure. and there's not, not a lot of games. So, uh, you, you know, you can, you can, you can take a lot of stuff away from this that maybe, you know, some players never, never did any Corver training or technical work or never did any ball work. And now they're getting, you know, two to three sessions a week, you know, for the past two <laughs> weeks. For the past two weeks on it so they're doing their own little technical sessions and um you know they're challenging because you're by yourself you can't hide you know what i'm saying you could hide in the passing line and and not get any work done practice session but you know wh why even show up uh to train if you're in, in your own little box if you're not going to work hard so um i've taken do some positives from it for sure do you feel like there's an element of like catching up like we've missed the season quote unquote missed the season so do you feel like players and uh even coaches of clubs have like this urgent feeling of making up for missed time well i mean i would only th uh think that um you know again if uh if it wasn't everybody you know and i like it's hard because i, I say that too and you're like well we don't get back to august you know and you guys are yeah. out there training so <laughs> uh, you know maybe again from our standpoint too being one of the more uh you know the first states to kind of open up or roll it out you know again whether that's positive or negative um then there's still players that aren't training um but i would say you know the course of the two or three months now that we're we've, we've dealt with this stuff and the fact that you know you know the same type of level like you know the, the premier league still not playing so yeah you know they haven't played any games um so you know and you could argue that the bundesliga is now you know those players are ahead of the premier league players you know and what about champions league so is that fair um, and then you look at the youth game. I mean, yeah, to a certain extent, um, but you know, we're not playing any games. It's, you know, it's not yet that, you know, Arizona's out here playing in tournaments and we're out here, <laughs> you know, we're out here getting, you know, high level games and, and, um, you know, California teams aren't, or Florida teams aren't, uh, that sort of thing, because it's, you know, I, that's what I think it's across the board. So, you know, did we miss out? I don't, I don't, I don't think that, um, that we did or that anybody should worry about that. Or if you're a youth player, you need to worry about that or a parent. Sure, yeah. I mean, the part that's trouble that, 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 that sucks is some of the, you know, the older kids that missed opportunities maybe in the summer to get recruited. And, you know, you could have been a player just sitting there teetering, like maybe when I was in high school, you know, that didn't, that barely even knew where they were going to go to high, college, you know, and maybe didn't have an opportunity. And then fortunately, you know, just 
wound up at a junior college because, you know, your buddy was going there, your other buddy was going there, or you had a soccer game in the spring where the coach was at, you know, so some, some players maybe missed out on that and it could be a positive thing because maybe they didn't want to play soccer, you know? So now they don't have the pressure of getting a scholarship. To them. <laughs> but, Fair, um, yeah. Yeah. Fair, yeah. So that, 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 that would be the challenge that some kids maybe, um, you know, missed, missed an opportunity to go play college soccer because of something like this. But um, hopefully there's not too many of those. So Eddie, as we, as we wrap up here, mate, how do we, how can people listen and connect with you, follow you, see what's going on with you? Uh, I try to stay involved as, 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 as much as possible. I'm not, I'm probably not as con- well connected as, as, as you are, but obviously, um, you know, I'm on Twitter. Um, I try to get involved with Instagram. Um, you know, during this quarantine, I, I, I took a brief, you know, dab at trying to become TikTok famous. TikTok's uh, pretty good though. <laughs> <laughs> so you know I'm, I'm out there on all of it you know um at hurts and fee so that's me um you know so i'm out there and I, if anything anybody always is, is able to connect with me and um like i said i'm a very open person um to a certain extent i like having conversations like this it's a pleasure being on here um if anything just to get the socialness and to talk to you again um like this uh because we had many conversations like this throughout our, our weeks at the a license so um yeah it's, it's just i like to think like that this i like to think this is a just a replication of sat having breakfast talking club stuff high school stuff and you can't be sat having having a sausage sandwich talking about <laughs> the way the way our clubs are working independently so eddie i've missed yeah. you man and i really appreciate you coming on this is this is brilliant and i think just the the idea of your background and and having this the again the word of persistence following that there is there is a pathway for someone everywhere and it's not this direct pathway to the top that we all think or that we even try and promote to our players so i think huge props to you for the work that you're doing with your players and the work you continue to do outside of that with even trying to get tiktok famous so thank you mate (laughs) no man i appreciate it thank you uh it's definitely a pleasure getting on here so it's at Hertz and C on, on all the social channels. Give them a follow. Eddie, yeah. thank you. All right. Thanks, Lee. As I said in the intro, Eddie and I were in the same group on the A license and it just goes to show the contacts and the connections that you build that I feel are significantly missing when we're working through Zoom calls and Zoom conferences. So check out leadonsoccer.com. There is a Facebook group there that I have open for you to review and analyze your own environment. And within that community there, there are other coaches who are on the same pathway, all trying to figure out their own route forwards, their own way to the top of whatever their desired game and and club of work is or if it's a school or if it's professional too so come and join us on there check it out leadonsoccer.com more coming from me as always again hertzen at hertzen c you can get in with eddie and with me at leadonsoccer let us know what you think more coming from heads and volleys real soon